Stugatz here for Blue Apron. 51 weeks of the year, Blue Apron does meal kits, but they've learned from some of their most loyal customers that they've been hacking Blue Apron to make their favorite side. So this year, Blue Apron has created special Thanksgiving side kits just for that reason. I cannot wait to make the stuffing. Oh, do I love stuffing. I love stuffing. It's my favorite side for Thanksgiving. Customize your recipes each week based on your preferences. Blue Apron has several delivery options so you can choose what fits your needs. And there's no weekly commitment, so you only get deliveries when you want them. Each meal comes with a step-by-step, easy-to-follow recipe card and pre-portioned ingredients and can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. Blue Apron's freshness guarantee promises that every ingredient in your delivery arrives ready to cook or they'll make it right. Check out this week's menu and get $30 off your first meal with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash Dugats. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash Dugats. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. With the City Double Cash Card, you get 1% cash back when you buy and 1% as you pay. That's like the joy of discovering the last donut. Ooh. And it has your name on it, literally, in chocolate sprinkly things. No way. Double the love with the City Double Cash Card. Apply now at city.com slash double cash. Don Lebatard. America is addicted to its technology, and it's really unhealthy. I keep having this discussion with my wife. Because she is on that phone nonstop. And what I have asked for our family to do moving forward is let's figure out a time where all of us put our phones away and none of us use them till the next morning. Stugatz. Yeah, but nobody wants to be with you. That just dawned on me. Thanks, Dan. (laughs) This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. Texter writes in, watching the show on TV is a must on Tuesdays. You get to see little things like reading Dan's lips as he totally berates Cody for ruining the last 40 seconds of the segment by staring at the clock the whole time. That guy was reading my every word. Wow. Um, because Scary. Greg Cody did. It is what somebody says here is right. Cody learning the clock is the final chapter of him being the show killer. Show killer! Correct. That's yes. the final chapter. The final he frontier. still hasn't learned how to do the clock right. He's still looking at the clock, confused. He ruined right. the last 40 seconds. Then everyone, this is the added bonus for me. We'll get to you in a second, Ron. Just give us a second. The added bonus for me is because I realize we're up against the clock and I'm just trying to disorient you. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm yelling at you. I'm just trying to confuse you so you won't look at the clock. Right. Uh, everyone gets mad at me for being mean to you sure. and yelling at you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, But That's they beautiful. love when we get you. But the means I have to get there. When they fail, as an added bonus, it's not just that it's not funny for the show. It also makes me look horrible, which right. is just perfect in the in symbolism. Yeah. yeah, where you just ruin the show and you I become either way. The sh- well, you don't win. Yeah. You're the show killer. You don't win. Show killer. But in the eyes of the people who consume this show, he is always winning. I mean, always it's, a ni- winning. it's a nice place to be sitting, right? I've been sitting it here is. for 15 years doing it. Yeah. If you want to talk to Ron McGill, the telephone number is 786-456-4837. Paul, you are on with Ron McGill. Go ahead, Paul. Hey, Ron. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, first and foremost. If sea creatures were to sit around a dinner table and eat Thanksgiving dinner, what would they have for their meal? Thanks. Huh. Sea creatures, what would they have for their meal? I think a big grouper. Big grouper would probably be the meal. I mean, it's kind of saying that you're eating one of your own, but uh, it's within the sea kingdom. I'm thinking a big grouper would make a wonderful Thanksgiving meal. Bobby, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead, Bobby. Hey, Ron. What do animals in the wild do when they get a cavity, and what do you do to the animals in the zoo if they get any dental cavities? Well, that's a good question. You know, uh, there are animals that have died in the wild. When cavities uh, expose the root, the infection goes into the jaw, and the animal can no longer eat. Um, Here at the zoo, uh, we have animals that have had root canals. We just finished doing a double root canal on a giant river otter. We just did a root canal on an African wild dog. Now, again, these things happen sometimes in the wild. Some of the animals can recover from it. Uh, It's incredibly painful, like anyone who's had a bad toothache knows. Um, Unfortunately, there are no dentists in the wild, and these animals, you'll see a lot of Big uh, adult lions, males, even if you see them in the wild, the older males have broken canines from fights with each other. Uh, And those canines can become infected if the infection 
you know, migrates into the jaw, I can kill the cat. Um, fortunately, how did, how did, more often if than I not, may, they, Ron, how did you find yeah. out that the otter had cavities? Did it stop eating, the sea otter? Yeah, exactly. We saw it just uh, starting to favor on one side of its mouth. It was just chewing on one side. The keeper observed it. You know, this is not right. Why is she just eating on one side of its mouth and not eating on both sides of the mouth? So we immobilized the animal, took x-rays, and sure enough, there they were, two massive cavities, a cracked canine tooth. And we had a specialist come in and do two full root canals on the animal, and now she's eating like a champion. Wow. I, I did a story on an equine dentist once. It was fascinating. I, I thought that was just an interesting way to yeah. make a living. Um, and, it, you know, that's, that's kind of tough. The way they do it, they actually take one of those big metal files and you float the teeth. Because sometimes if the teeth aren't meeting properly, they literally put a big, huge metal rasping file, like what you use to rasp on wood and stuff, into the horse's mouth. And they rub the teeth down and file them down so that they meet and they, they meet uh, correctly so the animal can eat properly. Our, our, uh, animal- oh, well, there's a question. Yeah, our oh, animals- I thought with- you were just going to re- uh, you know, just regale us with tales of <laughs> right. stories you've done about equine dentists. Sure. Sure, I got, you thought I got were more, interesting. I got more where those uh-huh. came from. Our, Zach, uh, you're on ESPN Radio, Zach. <laughs> yes. Hey, Ron, uh, my son had a story on the whooping crane on ha- having Whoop. them come back from extinction. But do they, is there inbreeding involved? Do they have to worry about that bringing those cranes back? Well, they certainly have to worry about animal inbreeding when you have populations that get so low. But fortunately, a lot of these, you know, these naturalists, these physiologists are working, and the geneticists are working with these captive breeding programs that they outbreed the gene as much as possible. I mean, that was done basically with the California condor. Remember, that animal was down to 22 animals left in the world, 22. So you're going to have some type of inbreeding there because 22 is not a huge gene pool. But they did DNA testing. They selected the animals to pair with what, the, what animals were there. And now there are hundreds of them, and actually many of them flying over the Grand Canyon. They were all bred in zoos and released back into the wild, uh, a species that was certainly become extinct. That was a big controversial issue when they said, listen, there's only 22 left in the wild. We're going to pull them out of the wild because zoos don't pull animals out of the wild anymore, except for a circumstance like this where it said, listen, it's a matter of we're going to lose the species. They're going to be gone forever. Or do we pull them out, try to breed them in captivity and release them back in the wild? The California condor is one of the greatest stories when it comes to that. 22 animals originally, but they have a good, healthy population now, thanks to the geneticists looking at the DNA and pairing them up properly. The whooping crane is Chris Berman's favorite bird. Well, that's a great piece of information. Ron, our animals... Fred, you're on ESPN Radio. Go <laughs> ahead, Fred. <laughs> yes, Ron, the uh, Georgia Department of Natural Resources sponsored a coyote killing contest during hunting season this year with the winner receiving a lifetime hunting license. Is that something that states typically do to thin populations? Um, I've not heard of that type of contest. You know, we had a contest down here, of course, at the python catching contest where they gave prizes, uh, monetary prizes, thousands of dollars for catching the biggest python. Uh, when animal populations get out of control, they pose a threat to the, uh, threat to the balance of whatever populations they're trying to manage in that area. I guess these wildlife authorities try to come up with, got no better word I can search of, gimmicks that are going to promote the, uh, the effort and hopefully make it a more successful hunt. Nick, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead, Nick. Hey there, Ron. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Um, Thank you. Yesterday, a uh, yesterday a six foot long crocodile was found on Hollywood Beach, Florida. And um, after kind of a long O.J. Simpson style white Bronco <laughs> uh, media look in um, from the local news, it was captured. I was just wondering, how does a six foot long crocodile get onto the beach? And um, how and are they even common down here? Well, I'm not going to say that they're common. They're much more common than they were 20 years ago. The crocodile is still an endangered species, a protected species. Um, and, it, you know, South Florida is the only place in the world where you can find crocodiles and alligators in the same general vicinity. Now, crocodiles differ from alligators in the sense they tend to be more brackish water animals and therefore can be found in salt water. I'm sure he kind of made his way through a canal or through an estuary and kind of got out into the, into the, the, the tide there in the current and ended up on the beach. So it's not... I'm not going to say it's unheard of. It's not common, but it's not unheard of for crocodiles being in the, in, in the salt water. As a matter of fact, in Australia, their big crocodile is a saltwater crocodile. It's found totally in, the, in, in salt water. Um, he probably got a little lost going through the canal areas. A six foot crocodile is not an old crocodile. It's probably five, six years old at most. Those crocodiles can get to be 12, 13 feet. Um, I saw the whole news thing, and, you know, they caught it, and they relocated it. It made great video, but, again, you know, people are starting to say, oh, my God, we got crocodiles on the beach, and now we're all going to die. It's not like that at all, okay? These animals are actually 
very shy animals. If you do not go after the animal, trust me, it's not going to go after you. Now, having said that, if you know there's a crocodile in the water on the beach, you don't go swimming. You don't go in there with your beagle or the little shih tzu walking along the coastline because they might look at it as a, as a food source. So, so keep that in mind. But also understand these animals are not going to come after you. It's not like going to be like this Jaws movie thing, except now it's a crocodile taking people down left and right. Let's go ahead and do play-by-play on this animal video that we've sent you. Okay. What do you have? What do you have there? There we go. Is, uh... I got, it looks like a bunch of turkeys here. Hold on. Let's hit the play button. Oh, yeah. It's a bunch of turkeys, male turkeys. and they're, oh, oh, and it's, oh, I get it. Turkeys, ball. Uh, and that's a good pick. You know what? The ball. You see how the ball is painted? It's painted with, with uh, like red and blue on it. These are all male turkeys. And oh, I get. This is supposed to be like turkey soccer. See how it kicks the ball? This is not turkey soccer. What it is is that these males see the red and the blue on the ball, and they think it's another male. So they're challenging it. They go, and that's how they kick it. They're spurring it like a like a, a, a fighting rooster. They spur it and they pick it. So you got to you, you know if you want to do the soccer thing. Okay, here it you does. Know, it's it the header. Like and now he goes, and that's a big kick. Oh, no, he's, oh. Up. he's oh, he's kicking it. Oh, geez, he's got it. They're killing it now. They lift it up and they're kicking it they're pegging it they're taking out this male let's give a good foot down the good spur boom yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it's turkey soccer all right turkey Great. Soccer. excellent happy thanksgiving ron we are as same always guys, grateful for you sir <laughs> thank you same here guys have Thanks, a great one bye-bye don libertard <laughs> Do you mind cleaning that up and tearing up papers and stuff when we're not on the air? Stugatz. I did it without really thinking. It was far from the mic. Didn't think it'd pick it up. As a kid, I used to make the sound of ripping paper. I used to delight my friends with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> also, you can go like that. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Lebatar Show on demand in the ESPN app, plus our Miami-only hour that airs before the show. And now you can subscribe to our Best of Podcasts. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. The Dan Lebatar Show is brought to you by Upside.com, giving all business travelers the gift of a better travel experience this holiday season. Check them out today at Upside.com. Hip-hop shows almost never reach the energy level that they have in the production. These guys come pretty close really? to reaching the energy level. Yeah, hip-hop shows they tend to be pretty stinky. Kendrick Lamar does, too. It's funny. It works the, uh, I guess for me, it works the opposite way with bands. Like, my favorite bands are the Grateful Dead and Pearl Jam. And the studio stuff that they do pales in comparison to Who are your to the- favorite bands again? Say that again. Grateful Dead. Uh-huh. Pearl Jam. White guys. Well, what, 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 what? Yeah, I deserve that. <laughs> um, but the the live concerts have so much energy, and the studio albums just don't. I mean, the Dead were never a big studio band, but their concerts have so much energy attached to them. Uh, Greg Cody, speaking of music, speaking of song, Greg Cody, one of the first signature things in his life when it came to public fame and acclaim was as the singing sports writer on Sunday mornings. I did a Sunday morning show from my home with my dog, Nemo. Uh, I would do it Sunday mornings, every Sunday morning. Greg Cody was a weekly guest, and he would uh, he was the singing sports writer. He would uh, tackle topics of the day through song. It was delightfully weird. It was the birthplace of uh, him as a radio regular. And the singing sports writer has been in retirement for how many years? Oh, gosh. I can't even remember the last jingle I did. It's been uh, years. It's been years. So right. you are coming out of retirement right now for a one-time yes. only performance. <laughs> it could be. Is this going to be great or is it going to be sad? Uh, are we going to be made sad because you've retired past your prime? Or like, it, are you ready to get it going and you're going to bring the house down? It could be sad. It could be the other. It, it could be uh, awful. It could be delightful. Well, what motivated you to do this? Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, it, it needs a little bit of a setup. Stugatz... Uh, Several weeks ago, you may remember this, you were doing a news read, and one of the things you mentioned, which interested me, was that Jingle Bells originated as a Thanksgiving song, and it only later became a Christmas song. So what I've done is I have reimagined Jingle Bells as a Thanksgiving song (laughs) with uh, what I imagine would have been the original Thanksgiving lyrics. Whether or not this is the final one uh, depends on the reaction he gets from the audience, right? Because if they love it, he's coming back next week. the, The chief, you know how survival in most human beings, survival is the strongest motivating force for Cody. It's laziness. So his need for attention. In fact, put this on the poll because his son and I were discussing 
this uh, during one of the breaks. Guillermo, what would Cody prefer at the end of the night? 12 bottles of beer or 12 <laughs> bottles of attention? We were having that conversation. Like, if he, if he could only choose one. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I would say one bottle of attention over 12 beers. I don't know. I don't, <laughs> bottles of attention. Yes, bottles of just uh, attention. It, it'd be so, you'd be drink every sip, you'd be like, wow, this tastes good. As opposed to the 12 beers that it takes mm. all 12 of them to get going in your system. One shot of attention. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and do this. Does it need any other setup? Here is the return after many years of retirement. Of the singing sports writer, do you need any help from us? Not really. I'm a little hamstrung because normally I sing while standing, so it's going to be a little. Well, weird. let's go ahead and do it. No, no let's do it. I didn't know. No, the, the I'll hold. I'll hold the microphone for you. Uh, and you know what? just go like this, Greg. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll stand I'll there right now. Do I need yep. the head, headphones on? Or? Uh, carry the head. Yeah, carry the, the, the microphone and the head uh, headphones. This is interesting that you need to stand while doing this. Well, you know, it, it's part of it is you know I like to sway a little bit. And okay, get All in right. rhythm. Whatever you, know. you need, man. Whatever you need. What's your motivation? Whatever you need. Are you ready? Yeah, everybody, let's do this. Dashing through the snow like Dolphins coach Chris Forster at his desk. O'er the fields we go, everything in jest. Bells on bobtail ring, making spirits bright. Under Cookbird, my biggest fear, more salmonella this year. Oh, turkey bells, turkey bells, turkey all the way. Oh, what fun to overeat and fall into a tryptophan haze. Oh, turkey bells, turkey bells, turkey tastes like a dream. Old granddad is drunk again, he's hitting old Jim Beam. A few years or more ago, Thanksgiving wasn't so hard. Football was about the game, the score and total yards. Now the game's about to start, the over-under's 43. Unfortunately, <laughs> that's not projected points, but players taking an anthem knee. Oh, oh turkey see, bells, no, turkey oh, bells, oh. turkey all the way. It's time to clink a glass and then stand up and say grace. Dear Lord, I hope we don't see again what we saw last Thanksgiving Day when old granddad... Vomited all over the one horse sleigh. Yay! Yay! Not worth the wait. Don Lebatard. That guy's an idiot. He's not smart at life. He's not smart at books. Hey, he's yeah. not smart at people. He's not smart at interesting radio. He's not smart. But that person has listened to the show every day for the last six years. Should stop now. Stugats. I wonder, though, if it's on us. Not on us. We're great. Awesome! Ah, best hour ever. Yes! yes it's yes, been our ever. best hour in best six hour. years! Yes. Best hour. Double metal fingers to you, best idiot hour. moron Jacko! <laughs> that hour just won a Marconi. What do you think of that? I don't even know what a Marconi is. <laughs> <For> really? <laughs> you <laughs> ruined it. We had a flow going. We had it going. That guy's Pasta, right. right? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Let's update the polls, Stugats, at Lebatard Show on Twitter. Also need to get to this Heat Ray Allen uh, telling an Orlando court that he was catfish story. The Twitter poll is brought to you by Upside.com, giving all business travelers the gift of a better travel experience this holiday season, Upside.com. Greg, are we interrupting you from something? No, what do you mean? What I mean, you were just typing. What were you typing? I'm just preparing to uh, not work. tweet something, but mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I'm fine. He was reading a news thing, whatever you call that. Okay. Well, so you weren't, poll you, you weren't like, listening to oh. what we were doing is the short answer, okay. right? Um, yeah, you're just sending out tweets. In, dialed in. It's not quite enough to get uh, the attention that you get from this national show that's on the radio and television. You also need to get more attention right. while you're doing it by sending out tweets. I was typing a tweet. Okay, what was the out. tweet that you were going to send out? Just so that we can all, since you stopped the show anyways, what was the tweet the that truth, you were going to? The truth be known, I was uh, assembling a, a Greg's Lobos update simply because I didn't think we were going to get to it during the tail end of the show. <laughs> you know, uh, just in case. I mean, it's just fine. You want to do a Greg's Lobos update? I mean, I'm, I can tweet it out. I can say it aloud. Whatever you prefer, boss. Update the polls. Boss man. Got. Okay. Were the 50s a real heyday for this? Oh, that was, uh, yes, for sexual harassment. Oh, yeah. Yes. 63% yeah. of the audience <laughs> said yes. <laughs> it was. It was. It was. It was a heyday, heyday for yeah. sexual harassment. You just slapped the administrative assistant on the butt, uh, and that was a heyday. We were doing everything wrong in the 50s. Is Greg Cody making you hungry? 
59% of the audience said yes. <laughs> Should Charles Barkley's Auburn statue be fat? 80% of the audience said yes. Do you imagine Bob Lee's Thanksgiving to be a little stuffy? 84% of the audience said yes. Is Rex and Rob Ryan walking around Thanksgiving in their underwear awesome or awful? Chris Cody oddly said it was awesome. Oddly. <laughs> 58% of the audience said it was awful. I mean, they're going to be sticking their fingers in stuff. Oh, well, who cares? It's the Ryan household. Then you know what you're getting a- into? Then they're going to ask you to pull their finger. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is the prayer at Bob Lee's Thanksgiving longer than a minute? 87% of the audience said yes. <laughs> that is such a great question. Who at ESPN do you think has the longest Thanksgiving prayer? It, it is a great question. Who at ESPN? Oh, Rinaldi. There's a score behind it. <laughs> Should the Bills, Dolphins, and Jets there is, be relegated? There's a choir. There is a choir. Mike oh, no is doubt. so right about this. Yes. Rinaldi starts to do the prayer, and a choir of angels absolutely <laughs> starts singing. Should the Bills, Dolphins, and Jets be relegated? 82% of the audience said yes. Would a team of the Bills, Dolphins, and Jets combined win the division over the Patriots? 70% of the audience said no. What would Greg Cody prefer at the end of the night? 12 bottles of beer or 12 bottles of attention? It's a tough question. <laughs> no, it's not. 67% of the audience said 12 bottles of attention. He loves attention, what? man. He loves attention. You do. You're sitting here. We're doing the show. You can't be bothered to do a radio show you're being paid for because you're busy sending out tweets on Lobo's updates. We'll get to it in a Mm. second. Uh, Headline here from the Associated Press. Heat great Ray Allen tells court he was catfished. Orlando, Florida, Dateline. We like Ray. We've had Ray on the show a lot. Miami Heat, these are always embarrassing. Miami Heat uh, legend Ray Allen believes he is a victim of catfishing and is asked in Orlando court to throw out a case where he's accused of stalking someone he met online. Allen says Bryant Coleman pretended to be a number of attractive women interested in him. In documents filed Tuesday, Allen acknowledges he communicated with who he thought were those women and that he eventually entered into an agreement with Coleman to not disclose details of those conversations. Allen says that agreement was violated it was not clear if coleman has an attorney and a working phone number for him could not be found coleman told the court in a fli- in a filing monday that allen is stalking him in allen's request for an injunction he says the reverse is true that's an unpleasant story right there. so bizarre um who uh you're just making a face to that's you who are almost fundamentally incapable of shame what happened what are you making a face who are you grossed out by more there what's happening uh, nothing. No, I was making kind of a similar reaction to to Greg. I just the story. I hadn't heard about the story until today. What was, it, what was the story? story? Were you listening? Were you not listening? Was, were you? Were it was you Ray Allen in a catfish story? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, what do you mean? yeah you just <laughs> you just piece those yeah, two exactly. words together. That's all I heard. <laughs> Go ahead. Shocking. Fire off the uh, the 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 ridiculous Lobo nonsense. It is time now for a weekly Lobo. update on our favorite team, Rex Lobos. <laughs> Here is the head coach every, and president of football game. operations. He week, Rex he he wants to be week, week. The only time he ever wants to do it is after he is absolutely uh, he's won one of these. Who did you beat this week? Greg's Lobos defeat Allison 110 to 93, improved to 7 and 4, tied for third in the 14 third team place, league. Third place, third place, you're celebrating third. Oh, no, place. Like Leading scorers, third place. Third Leading place. scorers, Breeze, Landry, Eisner, and McGillicuddy. This was the Don Levatar Show on ESPN Radio.